it's like noise is taking up like a 40% 30% of the sound maybe when i gain high set kiya kuch to okay again for 10 15 seconds okay yeah so this is our strontium setup hmm. our goal with this setup is to make a atomic clock strontium atomic clock as well as uh, some quantum information processing we want to do with the single deterministic trap strontium atoms so here uh, we will uh, explain in the setup now you can come So this is about the first part. Here is our strontium oven. Now the strontium is a metal which uh, has a melting point of about 700 to 800 degrees centigrade. So to have a like enough pressure pressure, we have to heat it to a 500 550 degrees centigrade. Uh, so we have this oven which is isolated from the environment, and uh, it is uh, again collimated by a micro capillary tube. so it will uh, collimate the atomic beam okay when you say collimate you mean like single direction or single direction with the little divergence as possible so atoms you do with magnetic fields uh, no no the atoms are passing through the like a hollow tube so if the atoms are passing through the, you can consider it as a like water if the water is passing through the water pipe then it will be collimated for the some distance but right but doesn't the atom interact with that tube yeah atom will collide with that tube So mm-hmm. whatever the atom which is not traveling in that direction, it will collide. Also, like it will polarization, just, uh, similar to polarization. Uh, it will not go out of that. Uh, so will it hit that. and then again go, or will it just like I don't know, absorb or something? So in the strontium case, it can uh, like stick to the wall. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Or it will just uh, go to in a random direction, and it it will just become a part of the background pressure. Okay. Okay. So to maintain the pressure here, so here our vacuum pressure is about uh, minus eight, minus nine torr. Hmm. and we also need to maintain this so this is our iron pump so iron pump maintains the pressure uh, for the background strontium yeah? hmm. which is uh, uncollimated so after that so after that here we have one four way cross so you can see the view ports are there so even though we have collimated our strontium atomic beam there is some uh, finite divergence is there so to compensate for the divergence what we do is that we send the beam from the up direction and the down direction and also from the sideways so it compresses the beam and uh, the divergence uh, decreases as uh, it uh, reaches the our science chamber so here it is again our zeeman slower is there so the zeeman slower is winded in a such a way that the specially varying magnetic field is uh, so the specially varying magnetic field will change the zeeman slowly at each point and uh, there is a one laser beam will be coming from this direction so that uh, atomic beam and the laser beam they both will, both will uh, on the resonant with uh, each other such a way that it will absorb the maximum number of photons so the initial uh, temperature our uh, temperature in the oven is about 500 to 600 degrees centigrade hmm. so the average velocity you can say it's also about uh, 550 meter per second so it's a very high velocity so here our in the mod region our capture velocity is only 25 to 30 meter per second so we need to slow the atomic beam down so that is done by this zeeman slower so at the end of the zeeman slower it is only uh, you can see most of the atoms are transferred to the below 25 meter per second uh, velocity range uh, yeah here is our one mod beam is going in this direction the second beam is there so both are perpendicular again x mm. and y and here in the vertical direction there is one so that is our z beam so this Maybe I can explain a little bit about the strontium atomic uh, energy level diagram. Hmm. Yeah, on that uh, computer. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay. What's that? So, for mod ka wo explain karna hai. Yeah, main do mod wai mein jo four sector mein se chahiye main. So we basically use uh, two types of light to cool the atoms. so one is this 461 nanometer hmm. so now this cooling of atoms that depends on this line width it is proportional to this line width that is called the doppler limited temperature now with this 32 megahertz line width you can cool it 
up to theoretically you can go up to 760 micro kelvin but experimentally at the best you can reach up to 1 milli kelvin of the order of 1 milli kelvin or 2 milli kelvin or so but when you are making an atomic clock your uh, temperature of the atom should be lower than this so this cooling is not sufficient for that so we need to do uh, I mean we, we need to cool it further mm. so that's why we use this particular laser which has a uh, wavelength of 689 nanometer and uh, you can see that the line width is 7.5 kilohertz where this is 32 okay. megas and as I told before that uh, this Doppler limited temperature depends on this line width and it's proportional to this line width so this Doppler limited temperature for this transition it is around uh, theoretically it is actually 180 nano kelvin i think uh, but experimentally you can go down to uh, one micro kelvin or something like that so this particular these two transitions uh, we use for the cooling of uh, the strontium atoms okay yeah now for the clock uh, mm for making an atomic clock yeah. uh, so what you need so suppose you have uh, one second time period and if you chop it very finely hmm. then your uh, precision in measurement will increase hmm. so now the uh, time standard has been defined on the basis of cesium mm -hmm. transition right which is some gigahertz now if you the 6 and 90 8 nanometer line width it has a frequency of hundreds of tera terahertz so you can finally chop that uh, one second more fine so but that is not the sole purpose of using this the other thing is this transition line width so this one mega uh, sorry one millihertz this, this line width is one millihertz means it's very narrow so this means the the you can say that the measurement error of this frequency you can uh, think in that way is is one millihertz so this enhances the quality quality factor of uh, an oscillator quality factor is def quality factor is defined by the frequency which is hundreds of terahertz divided by this uh, this line width which is f by delta f which is for strontium it goes around uh, 10 to the power 18 or something like that 10 to the power 20 okay so for this high co high quality factor hmm. the strontium atom uh, neutral strontium atom they act uh, as very good uh, device for timekeeping okay so this is the main uh, this is the theoretical background of making an atomic clock and uh, Kushan can elaborate the technical details of so we first need the 460 and blue light now hmm. getting a blue light is a bit difficult because the direct uh, lasers are uh, not available hmm. with the very good uh, like single mode uh, spatial filters and all that so what we are doing is that here if you see this is our 900 nanometer laser hmm. so that is in idea Right. Hmm. I guess we can turn it on and that yeah. would be better. Oh. Okay. So here it's a 922, so you won't be able to see anything. So hmm. 922 is coming. Hmm. Here the power is about like ten, uh, tens of milliwatt. So after that it is going to be stepped and amplified. Hmm. What do the paper amplifier do is that it amplifies the light. So it is go uh, enhances this to the few watts. And in our case it is right now 1.5 watt or something. Hmm. So after this 922 we down convert it to the 461 nanometer. Okay. So this 922 nanometer goes inside and there is a one crystal hmm. and there is a one resonator. So inside the resonator the light uh, interacts with the crystal and since the light is inside the resonator so instead of just uh, light going through the single pass it will be going through multiple times before it uh, 
escape the uh, KVT. Okay. So that is how the efficiency converting from 922 to the 461 is enhanced. So that is why we are using the KVT system there. And here you can see there is no light in the 922, but here, no it converts into the blue light, you can easily see. Hmm. So we also need to stabilize our laser. So this 460 nanometer uh, laser that is again uh, stabilized to the strontium uh, reference. Hmm. Uh, that is on that table, we will go there. Hmm. Okay, okay, just minute. Okay. So this is our the second system where we stabilize our laser. So here it is also again the similar kind of setup. There is a 101. So the atomic beam is coming and our mm. the uh, light beam is coming in the perpendicular direction. So since it is uh, coming from the perpendicular direction, so the Doppler. Uh, 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 so you can say that there is no Doppler component in the perpendicular direction. So whatever the spectra you will observe or the whatever the fluorescence you will collect it, that mm. will be only due to the atomic line width not okay. due to the Doppler uh, broadening so that is the uh, spectroscopy we are doing for the 461 nanometer so doing that doing this spectroscopy we are locking the our 461 nanometer laser okay you will show that So this is the KVT output, which is going for the different different things. So the one path is going for the locking on that table. The other path is going to the this second. Uh, this is our in-house uh, design as well as fabricated uh, uh, one more laser. So that laser's light is going inside this laser, and this laser is locked to that laser. Okay. So this laser is giving us about the 300 to 400 milliwatt of output of blue light, and that we are dividing it for the uh, MOT beams as well as the Zeeman slower. Hmm. So this is our uh, setup for the 461. So the beam is coming from the downstairs. It is going in the up, and then there are some optics to do the polarization and all that to change the manipulate the polarization as well as the power in the each beam. And after that, it is uh, divided into three equal uh, beams or mm. the three beams which containing the equal power. Mm. This one is the Z beam which is going the down and mm. again retro reflected. This is the X beam which is again retro reflected and the Y beam again retro reflected. So due to this, uh, okay. you can see it through. You can see through, but right now the mod is not there. Ah, oh, that is fine. Okay. You have videos, right? Yeah, we have. Oh. So when these optical beams are uh, coinciding with each other, at the same point, this is our magnetic coil. So that magnetic coil is in an anti hamels position. So it will have the zero in the center. So that zero of the uh, zero of the magnetic field and the center of our optical beams there also coincide so there is the magnet optical trap tra tra will form hmm. that is called the mod so this is our first stage of the blue mod so after that we turn on our the red light so for the red light i will show you the setup hmm. by the way the swansom also needs one brief on that oh where is that Greenish light. Oh. So that is also the, that extra the heat on for the strong mm. That is again mixed with the mud. Why is this green? So if you uh, correct, energy level diagram may Okay, go there. So even the output of this will be. Yeah, everything go there. Okay. So so what happens uh, when you are pumping the atoms from this level to these levels, mm. it decays from here to here and go to this state. Now this state has a very long lifetime, which means if the atom, if one atom goes in this state, it will be there forever, literally forever. So then what happens, you will lose these atoms and you cannot use those atoms uh, in your cooling cycle. So what usually we do, we pump 
these hmm. the atoms in this state hmm. from another level which is not shown here okay and they will come back via this uh via this yeah in internet to here so this is the uh, uh so that's how we use the repumper laser to make these atoms uh come to this hmm. uh cooling cycle okay cycle will be closed otherwise since the cycle is not closed hmm. the atoms will uh, keep uh, leaking out of this uh, mod cycle you can take one picture from here i guess from yeah that later i'll uh, do stock footage but okay. explanation will finish first maybe on that side you can go and that would be better for that you know okay you can go on that Yeah, there are lots of cables. Okay, yeah, so this will. I guess that will be that much. Okay. That is our red laser system. Hmm. So again, the red laser system is also locked to the atomic reference. So our atomic reference is this. Uh, it is called the heat well. Hmm. And when the laser is locked to the red uh, line of the strontium, then again we do the injection locking with our uh, in-house uh, fabricated and designed the injection lock module, which is on this table. Okay. This one. You can go inside. This. Okay. Hmm. And then this light will again mix with the blue light. So this blue and red. Hmm. Uh, that will form the blue red blue mod and the red mod, and that will cool down the temperature of the strontium hmm. to one micro kelvin. Okay. and after that the next step is to load the atoms into the optical lattice which will tightly trap the atoms so that uh, that spatial it will provide the spatial confinement so whenever you are in interrogating the atom due to the doppler shift the first order of the doppler shift will be cancelled so in the atomic clock uh, that uncertainty you can say ki you have uh, cancelled out okay so that is our uh, <coughs> next target after the finishing with the red mod so okay, when you said there still more to add to this yes what is that so the more to add is the first of all we need to complete the red setup red hmm. setup is not complete now hmm. after that we will put one uh, glass cell on that side hmm. i will show you from the other side put one a uh, gate wall hmm. and after gate wall there is a uh, also opening so here we will put on glass cell and we will transfer over the atoms which are already cold from the first chamber to the second chamber and in hmm. the second chamber we will have the high n objective hmm. so what high n objective does is that it focuses the light up to few micrometer or even hundreds of nanometer hmm. so at that very tight focus you can deterministically trap the single atom hmm. and with the single atom you can manipulate it in a ground state or the excited state and based on that you can do the quantum computing and in the same time since it is in your second chamber you can also put one optical lattice which is of the 852 nanom 813 uh, nanometer hmm. that will act as a so that that can be used for your optical uh, lattice clock okay and you can interrogate with the 690 nanometer laser and uh, you will have the lock so your lock your 690 nanometer laser to your atomic reference okay ha i think then i think i have to stop battery khatam ho gayi okay.